following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Uh, we're going to take a look at gold first. But before we take a look at gold, we're going to put Tommy on the spot here and uh, show that, if you guys are seeing this, ton of videos done for TFNN. They're all in... Uh, in the queue, so to speak, uh, and TFNN will be posting these somewhere on their site. A lot of different views on how to use the scanner. Hopefully, it'll make some sense. And uh, obviously, any questions that you have, feel free to email me directly, like some of you have been emailing me. Some, I get some hate mail from you. That's okay. Just kidding. Actually, everybody that writes is, is just it's a pleasure to read your emails, so please keep writing the emails. I love getting them, and I love responding to them. So, uh, hopefully those will be up today and, um, and, and, uh, obviously feel free to call the show anytime. The numbers are on the uh, homepage of the TFNN website and I always love to hear from callers during the show. So first of all, we're going to take a look at gold. Um, if you look at this and you look at the cell structure here of the scanner, you know, this is something that you just don't want to play around with shorting until you get some things you can lean on or you see some red shoots if you will on the downside you know we had talked about and i'm gonna go into gold real quick we had talked about you know or i had talked about maybe you didn't talk about it 1104 how we were starting to crowd that area and last week i was like you know what all bets are off on the short side for a while on this i'm not exactly excited about buying the breakout and i've been talking about that i just wanted to see a friday close above this 1104 that's that still hasn't happened if i'm not mistaken today's thursday uh but you know what do you do with this thing i mean it I got to tell you, uh, it does look a little breakoutish now, and at at the very least, it's not something you can take a big short position on yet. Uh, if you think this thing's going to dive, eleven twenty now, we got back into the fair auction just right now, basically on the two forties, and I love these two forties. As you can see, the two forties usually regulate the trade one way or the other. So as that breakout happened, eleven oh four, there's that eleven oh four on the weekly. Remember, top of the box on the 242, we kind of got that that uh, relief valve type feeling as it uh, climbed above those areas on two different time frames. And and now, you know, we're kind of looking at this. We may explore the fair auction on the 240s back down into 1108. And we could retest that 1104. So you've got a little bit of a DMZ down there. I think that this market may kind of magnetize down into. and And that's what I'm. That's my gut feeling on this, actually. Usually you get these breakouts, and, and a lot of times you get a retest. We may get a retest next week. We may never get a retest, but that would be the powerful trade for longs. Then you can orient the stops around that 1104. If you guys have been taking some of these long trades already, God bless you. That's great. Um, Gold's had a decent little run here. Um, but, again, 1104, 1108, I'm looking at this. A little bit of a scary trade to go against this trend right now, but there's that 19. See that 19, 240-minute bars 19 times in a row have kind of eclipsed that. That's how you read that. There's the arrow up. There's the arrow up on the 60s. But remember, um, if we go into the landscape view here, we can see that the level of the market is right back within that fair auction. And, and folks, we, you know, we could come back and retest some of these numbers down below. So if you look at our chart, here's our daily Here's that 240-minute view, getting right back in there. I'm going to cry. I'm so happy looking at these things. We actually are going to pull, pull in another charting module from another thing that we've been working on to make these a lot more functional with you know all the zillions of canned indicators. I don't know why you would need them. Actually, 
they're great to have. And again, slowing down trading is not a bad thing. Um, I love to listen to Basil and Steve and, and, uh, Tom and, and, uh, David White and the rest of them. Um, just to get a different perspective. Sometimes, you know, I, I, I kind of get caught up in my own world and I love to listen to some other ideas out there because then I'll, again, it, it, it allows you to kind of have that confluence of, wow, all of us are thinking the same thing. Doesn't have to be right, but at least probabilities in my mind, I feel a lot better about things when I listen to, to those guys and, and they're, uh, you know, we're all singing the, t the same tune, basically. So, again, slowing trading down, waiting for things to line up, using some other things in addition to what we talk about every day is not a bad thing. Um, I'm not egotistical about what I use. I'm, I'm very open-minded, and I think you should be, too. So, uh, as we look at some of the other products up here, um, we're going to take a look at silver really quick. And uh, these are kind of the household names, some of them that we go through every day. We're going to take a look at, uh, at March silver. And we talked about yesterday, um, you know, 14, 4, 42, 43 would be support on this. Well, that's broken and silver, silver has obviously shown its hand again as something that is very lagging when it comes to, uh, the gold silver group, if you can call it that way. So right now, Again, you know, the stop out has happened on, on that type of trade. We're not really exactly spinning around up here. We talked about consolidating around this area to, to possibly move higher if this was going to be the case. And that was a little bit too much of a move down for me. I'm not trading silver right now. I just kind of don't I, I, I don't have a, a good feeling about it on the long side. So I wasn't necessarily stopped out. But if you were playing that game, you you more than likely should have should have should have been taking a little bit of a stop out there. Uh we're going to take a look at treasuries really quick. This is something, you know, a little concerning to me on the short side. I don't like how it's kind of spinning around up here and consolidating and not wanting to come off these weekly unfair highs, which are at, remember, 128.28. Um, again, this is a little bit of a scary trade. You're going to have to have some market help to pull this back now, it seems. And, then, and as we, you know, you look at this type of action, this is not what you want to see on the short side, I'll be honest with you. So... I'm not as super excited about shorting against that level right now, but I'm I'm actually going to keep playing that game. I'm 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 not as uh, bearish on the U.S. stock market as uh, some folks out there. And if we look at the Shanghai, there's the there's the S and P's. If we look at and you know, God, violent reaction yesterday, yesterday afternoon really actually pissed me, you know, upset me. Put it that way as I should say on the air. Um, but I want to look at the Shanghai. You know, obviously the Fed has uh, come out with some dovish comments to some degree. And you knew that was going to happen. I mean, there was no mystery in that. Uh, but as we look at the Shanghai, you know, Tom and I talked yesterday afternoon on his show and then, you know, about this particular action and the hole in the marketplace down here on the Shanghai. I want to talk about that a little bit because... Next stop down on this literally could be 2371. We'll be right back at you. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS as proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now, now. now. toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi guys, welcome back to the show and uh, going, showing our index heat grid here. And, and remember, these are our net profile breath calculations um positive or negative based on these odometers for the quick view then drilling down deeply into these things you can see and i'm looking at the the seller dweller the shanghai and it's it's really cool how our i mean god our market is just holding up tremendously during this pullback in this but you know what we kind of were stable on the way up stable meaning nobody making any money going sideways kind of for a lot of this move and and uh Actually, let me see here. Yeah, going sideways on the uh, on the S and P's, and the Shanghai's just kind of done its thing, and we're, you know, we've sold off a little bit in in a relative sense. Um, but as you look at this, man, we are are we getting? This is our weekly breath. My God, it's 162 stocks in the Shanghai are trading below profiles in the Shanghai 180. This is not the Shanghai 380, Shanghai 180 that we do. There's two stocks trading above profiles. Incredible. Kind of seeing myself on TFNN. My lips are... I'm using a new uh, lip gloss called uh, Arctic Lanolin Dream. I don't know if... Seems a little shiny. Don't ask me about that name. Uh, but as we... Uh, as we as we look at these... <laughs> as we look at these task profile net calculations uh i want to go back to the shanghai and i want to show you something <sighs> tammy the uh curling of the eyelashes is next i want to show you something i want to take out the middle ground here uh you know this shanghai and this is our long-term view and obviously there's some other views here going on in the daily but you know this this broad kind of Tie to the marketplace change. I love Basil coining that term. It's just awesome. I use it all the time now. Um, you, you know, we're we're not really seeing the end in sight here if, with this. If you know what I mean, we haven't even started to even curl around. Talking about curling eyelashes, we're not. We're, the Shanghai breath is not even starting to curl over here or fold over. And uh, I want to go back to this Shanghai chart, long term view here. We don't have. 
this much data back history in our scanner charts. But if you'll notice here, we were talking about this yesterday. You know, there's a hole between, and that you know, the, the premise on profiles is when market participants didn't really, there was no balanced areas in the past that kind of legoed up. And that this, I'm confusing myself now. When there's a big gap in profiles, let me just state it that way. In the past, there, there were no market participants that really wanted to really pick this as a balanced area, if you will. So there's a hole in the marketplace between 28.13 on the Shanghai and 23.71. Now, the theory is when there's no market participants that really pick that as a fair auction at all, prices will move really quick through these holes in the marketplace. This is actually really important for me to say this. And this applies on a lot of different time frames. So while I'm talking about that, um, I'm gonna at, at the break, I'm gonna grab a slide or two that, that will really um, pinpoint what I'm talking about. And you're gonna experience a lot more volatility in Shanghai, and a lot of times these holes are completely explored. So we could see literally another three to 400 points down in the Shanghai quickly. All right, what, what that does to the U.S. stock market, it seems like, I mean, we're trading up this morning. We had a little Fed kind of noise yesterday on the close, and that, that really kind of upset me. I was actually, um, I, I took off, if you'll notice, here's a 240 on the ES. I took off some weight at the top there. I've been pretty, we were pretty bullish yesterday morning around 18. 80. We talked about leaning on that as a fence. That worked out really good. First targets were 1904, then the 1909 and 1918. Ultimately, I left some on actually, um, and I uh, got stopped out of half of it. Took off half, but uh, again, you know, what do you do with this now? We're going to talk about that a little bit. But I just wanted to say that, you know, the Shanghai could experience a lot more downside very quickly, and uh, 2371 is going to be a big number for that index. Let me see. Um, <laughs> all right. So just reading some comments in the den there. Um, you know, I want to take a look at the Nikkei really quick. Kind of the, uh, you know, a lot of these things are, are just kind of shucking off. Well, that's. What goes up comes down on the Shanghai. And here's the Nikkei situation. Here's the March contract. Very similar now looking to the S&P. So in my opinion, you've got, you've got a chance to get up to 17,765. That's going to be resistance on the Nikkei. On the, this is our intermediate term. You've got support at 16,403. But the 240s, if you're trading this futures product on the CME, 17,000 is, is decent support here, and you got another one at 17,319 up top. So right now, I'm kind of in no man's land on the Nikkei. All right, let's hit a couple other usual suspects that we kind of have to, you know, keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on here globally before we start drilling in the stocks. We've got a lot of stocks of their earnings, the Facebooks of the world, Amazon, Yahoo, Verizon, stuff like that. So let's let's go back into our uh, Forex section for a second in the scanner. Let's take a look at the euro really quick. And as you can see, all right, pretty balanced there. Boom, trading right above that 109 area, which is uh, not making me happy because I'm playing around with that 109 area personally. And it's uh, Trading's nerve-wracking sometimes, and this is the, the euro really, in my opinion, that 109, in my opinion, I'm going to, you know, again, keep, the, this is the big number for me, and I'm continuing to put stops, relax them a little bit around these weekly unfair lows, and I'm hoping at some point this thing just kind of gives it up, and uh, that's, I'm still trying to play that particular trade on the euro, and uh, again, you know, it's odds, 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 sometimes we're wrong. Sometimes we got to get stopped out, uh, and that's the that's the truth on everything, really. As the Canadian dollar, this is one we've been following intensely. Here's where the level of the market is now. We've kind of breached that 141.27. We had a little bit of a bounce off of that. I'm going to show you that. This is our daily. Had a nice little bounce actually, but again, gave it up quickly. And now now the trade is off uh, on the long side for me. 
So here's our four hour. Here's the daily. I'm looking at long term. Remember, we were trading this on a long term basis. And as we use these profiles to regulate the trade up off of this weekly, remember the daily, the next level down is kind of that regulator of the long term trade. So again, right now, this is a little bit too much below the 141.27 for me. So this is kind of off the off the radar for now. Uh, and Larry has pointed out really in a in a great way how much that correlation is with crude oil. I'm going to pull up crude oil. And um, we talked about getting a, a daily close above these 3273 areas. We're going to talk about that a little bit. We talked about that with Tom yesterday on his show. And we talked about the next leg up on uh, crude oil, which is going to be in that 37, 38 area. We're going to cover that when we get back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Here's a picture of the long-term situation on crude oil relative to pro our profiles. And again, you know, we're at, we're at a precipice right now. We talked about that 3273. We're trading above there right now. And we talked about the next leg up could be if we have this breakout. And, we, and, and again, I'd like to see a daily close above 3273. And I'd like to be able to use that at that point as a 
you know, area to orient stops around based on, again, appetite for risk and things like that. 3762 would just literally be getting back to the most current bottom of our fair auction on our long term profile. All right. So, again, I like, I like, I don't talk about this enough. I, <clears throat> I'm not the smartest guy in the world, and I really need things black and white for me, and I need to be able to block out one side of the marketplace. Considering that we're still in a downtrend in crude oil, uh, you got to take, you know, not get too happy. Let's get some confirmations that we're kind of breaking stride here. And remember, if I'm ever wrong about things and just talking about them in general, remember I've always consulted with Larry Pesavento, and it's his fault. If we're talking about something that doesn't work out, if we if something works out, I've never consulted with Larry. You should always look to me to say thanks. Um, <laughs> OK, so uh, here here's where that profile. <laughs> here's where that profile is. This is our daily. And if you want to go into the scanner, you can kind of see all this. I'll go into my future section. <clears throat> Just kidding. Uh, here's the uh, crude oil here. And as you can see, we're starting to breach, breach, breach. But again, remember this big red number on the weekly in that 12 here. Here's uh, the level of the market. Just we could have, you know, again, some people scrambling to cover that have been kind of selling resistance, selling resistance. And that's been the name of the game. I mean, you got to kind of turn the wrench the same way until you're told differently. We talk about that all the time. Um, I want to see a close above to really get you know, uh, conviction about trading a contra trade against the long-term friend down. I li I have to see that, uh, daily close above 3273. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, um, and again, uh, just to kind of hammer this home, you know, I, we're kind of crowding this area and not wanting to get away from it and stay away from it. Uh, that's concerning if you're short. But remember, that's the big number, 3273. Orient stops around. If you're going to play the, we're just rallying back up into resistance on the way down. You can look at this two ways. But, I, you know, this kind of compression up into this area is is concerning to me. And we were talking yesterday on, the, uh, on Tom's show about, Going back to the S and P's, talking about the word concerning, um, you know what's really weird is is on the S and P on the on the U S stock market, you know I mean we pull back, but for some reason, I'm not as concerned about the pullback, which is concerning, if that makes sense. Um, you were talking about the VIX a little bit. Uh, I tell you what, I've got a caller. We'll come back to that. Uh, John from Philadelphia, are you there? Uh, John Logan, thanks for doing the show. You're terrific. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, between you and Larry, you've got all the bases covered. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what's What's on your mind? How are you? <laughs> I'm very good. Um, what's on my mind is uh, crude oil. Okay. And I wanted to ask if you bring back up that um, the daily uh, chart with your TAS profiles on it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I um, wanted to ask you, you had mentioned, so 3270 is, on a closing basis is kind of the pivotal number as you see it? 73, I'd like to see it. I, what I'd like to see is, I, let, me, let me pull the chart back up, hold on. What I'd like to see, 3273 is a number, I'd like to see it get clean and clear of what we call the noise level, which is 10% of the value of the height of that profile. And if you'll notice in the scanner, I'm going to pull that back up. <laughs> if we go to crude oil, you'll see top 16 there. It says top because, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to show a one. Let me just give you, okay, see on live cattle that one right there? Yeah. I don't know if, okay. That is saying that we've gotten clean and clear above top, and it's kind of through the noise level, and it you know, can be considered valid. I want to see that happen on crude oil. I want to see a one in green there. And then we may have broken stride a little bit on the intermediate, and we may be able to climb up to that 37 and some change area. But then we can also kind of look at that as a stop um, you know, stop level uh, to orient stops around that 32.73. So 
Again, I don't, I'm not trying to get everybody gung ho about going long crude oil right now. I'm just saying that it's looking a little concerning for shorts because of this compression up into it. Not really wanting to stay away from the top of that profile. So very good. Thanks for elaborating on that. I just um, wanted to share this observation just for what it's worth, which of course isn't that much. I started trading from the long side very aggressively five days ago on Thursday, the day after the low on the new the new contract low and the low for this bear market move as, mm-hmm. as uh, uh, right. far. And, that's awesome. But, I mean, that's just my perspective. Mm-hmm. What I'll share is this, more importantly, is the following. We've declined from 105, of course, back in 14, down to 27. Yep. And uh, we're popping here. Uh, the, the scope of this bear market is, of course, highly impressive. Yep. And at some point, it's going to end. Perhaps it's already just ended. Could be. And the observation I wish, wish to share right here is, uh, example this, I will just uh, share, and people in the Tiger's Den have heard me say this, mm-hmm. I speculate we're rallying back to 38 here. Um, but leave that speculation aside. I share an observation for you about the crude oil futures market itself. Mm-hmm. Currently today, March crude, you know, 3270 right now, this contrasts uh, very strongly with just three months hence the June contract. In other words, oil for delivery in June, not March. That is up $4 higher, 3670. So from uh, what I'll share with you is the following, and I've seen this before, it comes into play infrequently, and I wanted to alert your listeners to this feature. If you're speculating on a bull market now, like I am, Mm -hmm. uh, you're faced with a dilemma in that the futures out a month, two, and three are already, you know, 10% or more higher, which if the market uh, rallies to 38 for example, mm-hmm. uh, like I'm speculating, it could rally to 38 by June, and there'd be very little profit potential because the June the June futures are already way up at 36, 37. Right. So right. I just I share that that feature, uh, which is going to complicate things, and I just wanted to um, share that uh, yeah. and emphasize it to myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Um, and, and, you know, just as we're talking, it's uh, crude starting to settle back just a tad here. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm listening to everything everything you're saying, John, and it's actually something to keep in mind. Thanks, thanks for calling in. John, thanks so much for that input. Yeah, man. Okay, we'll be right back, guys. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. 
Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry Larry sends out, and throughout the week when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. I was just looking at breakouts here on the S&P 500. I was looking at McDonald's, actually. Well, again and again, amazing. That, that stock continues to amaze me. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, we were talking about somebody else's fault again. It's going to be uh, TFNN's fault this time. I uh, posted a ton of videos. I think they're they're okay. Futures, long-term trades, short-term trades, uh, just some basic how do you enter the trading day type type videos. I think they're going to get those out there to you today or at least send you some links. So, uh, again, it's not my fault if that's not up. It's never my fault. Uh, here we go. Amazon. Let's take a look at it. All right. Uh, 604 right now. Uh, here's the big number. Here's, here's the, the weekly, and I, I just love how these things work like this. Close below, go back and retest, provide some opportunities around that inflection point. As you can see, this is our long-term. Remembering that long-term takes precedence over intermediate down the line, and, um, you know, kind of, a, kind of a nice situation when that happens. Uh, we're going to take a look at Facebook. I don't – this is a little-known stock. You might want to keep it on your radar screen. Trading 108 right now. Uh, wow. <laughs> Remember, we're trading 108 pre-market. Guess where the unfair highs are on our weekly 108.85. Keep that in mind. If you're wanting, wanting to trade this thing, don't get too jolly about just buying something that's up 10, 12, 15 percent. You got some headwinds in the way around that. Let me just go back to our scanner and let's 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 do this deal. Let's type up Facebook here really quick. This is really cool because even though, it's, you know, you're not showing these, the weekly and daily prints are not, you know, this is a function of e-signal feed, by the way. Again, not my fault. Uh, but, but what we can do is hit our landscape levels, and you can see the level of the market pre-market, and you can also see that 108.85 I just talked about there. All right. Uh, you should be able to go in this chart also and see – this action on a chart, very cool. Uh, but again, the big number to keep in mind here is that that number 108.85 on Facebook. That's going to be a little bit of a lid there. You might be able to do some day trading around it, but uh, you know you might have better weaker stocks to short uh, if you want to just get short. Nope, not yet. OK, 
Okay, some some of the other stocks I want to talk about. Uh, I wanted to look at Yahoo. Let me pull this one up. Okay, uh, a little bit of pre-market activity. It's trading thirty forty-five right now. Uh, again. You know, a stock that's, you know, kind of been trading along with the market here, but starting to show some pre-market activity above this daily unfair high. Might get a close above 3013 for the first time. That would mean we could easily see 3250 on this with some market help. But remember, uh, Yahoo, you know, you probably got better longs out there if you want to get involved with something long. And what I wanted to do was go into our scanner and just basically go to our pull up our S and P 500 and then go to the breakouts. Uh, and I want to look for something that's happening on the daily here. And remember, I can go into the dashboard and I can go into above on on the daily. I can sort these in this fashion. I can see some things that are starting to breach here as of yesterday on the close. Remember, pre market these aren't. These dailies aren't exactly updating on our cells here. Apache, ETR, EXE. Um, but then you've got some things that have clean and cleared the noise level that we talked about before, getting above that top, showing one, which is a, a CA Incorporated, Console Energy, Johnson & Johnson. Let's take a look at Johnson & Johnson. There we go. And here we go. So... Here's a daily on Johnson & Johnson uh, pre-market. We're kind of hanging up there, hanging in there. I think we've got a print. Yes, we do. Uh, here's our weekly on Johnson & Johnson. So even though we broke out on the daily, you still got to get clean and clear of this 102.49, all right? Then we might be off to the races on this one. But, again, just putting it on your radar screen, uh, Noble Energy NBL. Let's take a look at that one. I'm gonna I'm gonna drill a little deeper on this one. NBL. NBL. And yesterday, uh, we actually put a, a note in the scanner, uh, updating server data. Data. This will be completed within three hours. So we we were again trying to again beat this thing up even farther and farther. So we had everything was again updating right. Some of the cell colors were a little lagging here, just intraday for a while there. But let's take a look at uh, NBL. Um, again, you know, even though we have that uh, indication on on the daily, I'm going to pull this back up here really quick. You see that one, but you see we're right at the bottom, which means we have another headwind that we've got to clear to really start looking at this with a little bit of go-go juice here. 29.96, we've got to clear on MBL. Where did it go? Am I seeing things? Okay, here we go. I'm sorry, MBL. The years of abuse. Here we go. All right. So we want to, even though we see that one there, we want to get clean and clear of that inflection point, 2996. Okay. Even though it's showing one there, breakout on the daily. There's the breakout on the daily. But again, we want to get kind of back in the fair auction on our long term weekly. <laughs> Uh, let's see. This one. Verizon. What do you do with this thing? So pre-market, it looks like we got a print here about forty-eight ninety-one. Uh, had the weekly close above last week. Went back and to some degree retested. This is a really good example of kind of maybe getting a better print <coughs> on the. <coughs> on these breakouts and waiting for it to come back and retrace a little bit from that, you know, former resistance, now support type scenario. Saved you a couple of points probably if you took that attitude. But remember, this is going to be popping up on the scanner, you know, as of last week. You're showing one in that weekly column in green, and then you can kind of keep it on your radar screen. What I do is I go in here and, you know, I find some things that kind of are looking attractive and I want to monitor them. And then I come in here and just, you know, make a new list, hot stocks or whatever and just uh put my facebook nbl blah 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 
save the list, go back and put it in my navigation bar, stocks, blah, 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 and then it's going to load it up here so I can get to it really easily. Hot stocks, and then there we go. And we can kind of just kind of monitor this. Just go over there and click on some of these lists that you got one way or the other just for kind of monitoring purposes. All righty, we'll be right back. O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Hi, guys. We're going to take another, another look at uh, Apple. Little-known stock out there. Um, might want to pay attention to it uh, here's our weekly situation talked about that profile appearing above price action which kind of a lot of times overrides everything else uh, just a very bearish situation um, and uh, here's our daily again we talked about using 101 and a half into 104.29 as a little bit of a collection area for shorts, we just barely got into the hint of that area, got into the top of our profile and daily, if you can see how that works. And um, obviously, you know, Tom's been talking about this religiously, that this company's got some issues and may not be the darling of the uh, 
excitement world anymore um, for a while at least. And we pulled back significantly off those one. Was it what were the highs on this thing? One thirty something, one thirty and some change. But you know the the cool thing is. Uh, had a little bit of a breakdown there, and then I got stopped out. I thought that was the the, the original move, but then you got to again keep turning the wrench the same way. We break down on long term profiles, and um, we're doing it again. And then we had that supply area above price action. That is just for for you long term guys. This is you got better longs out there. Um, and is the ride over for the shorts? You know, I I don't really see it. Um, I don't see any indications that it's okay to, you know, new demand areas being put in, anything of that nature. So uh, Apple could contend, can continue to slide, and um, that's uh, the way the ball bounces with this thing. It's amazing. And here's the uh, here's the kind of the cell structure view, if you will. Uh, just, you know, no green shoots, no <laughs> just not a lot of uh, – not a lot of, not a lot of green shoots out there for that thing. Um, I want to go into our ETF grid for a second. And um, you know we've we've been looking at these sectors that may have been holding up, and the XLE. It's amazing uh, the breadth on this situation really started changing recently. Um, we had a little bit of disturbance yesterday afternoon, but, you know, we started getting some indications on the 26 going positive on our short term again. But, you know, throwing that aside, we've always kind of looked to see if you're going to trade oil, oil from the long side, uh, maybe it might be easier just to go in and find some instruments that are holding up. And these have been great relative strength traits. I mean, uh, I, I can't keep talking about them enough. A lot of these, you know, stocks can make, 20, 30, 40 percent moves here. Um, some of the ones we, we've been monitoring, I don't think are off the table yet. If, if crude oil breaks above that 32.73, especially a close, you're going to get some people piling into some more of these, you know, stronger energy stocks that have kind of shown their hand early. Again, the Cabot Oil and Gas Company, the EQT Corp, um, you know, that good old friend of ours, Southwestern Energy Corp, uh, Range Resources. And uh, Spectre Energy Corp. So, you know, here's RRC. Again, um, had the breakout on the daily a while, a couple of days ago. Here's the weekly situation, starting to show some green shoots on the long term, breaking above profiles there. Uh, keep your eyes on these things. These are, these are, you know, again, if oil if oil closes above 3273, you might get some people piling more so into these things. Here's Cabot. Guys, thanks. Larry's next. Stay tuned. Stay tuned to all the hosts on TFNN all day. Stay away from CNBC. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.